Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the afternoon of day one on ClayShareCon. We have a really great demo ready for you with Jeff Rotman for GR, from GR Pottery Forms, and he's going to go over some GR Pottery Forms basics. So if you've never used GR Pottery Forms before, this is for you. If you have been using them all along and you still have some questions or you're struggling with some things, this will be a perfect refresher for you. Also a great chance to speak with Jeff and to ask him any questions you might have. Now you can see I have some pieces in front of me that I've made using my GR Pottery Forms. You know, I love all the shapes. I really like the stackable forms. So here is the spherical triangles. I love these. And I just had a piece come out of the kiln that I made last week. And I did this tutorial live in Clay Share Prime Time, and we made this gorgeous triangle plate, and then we glazed it. So love it. Also did this one using JR Pottery Forms, getting a little out of the box, and some just fabulous plates with Amico Potter's Choice Celadons and some great texture. So I could show plates all day, but I think we'd have much more fun if we brought Jeff in and had him show us some JR Pottery Forms basics. Hey, Jeff. Hello. Welcome. Good to have you here. Welcome to ClayShareCon. Thank you. It's so Again. good to be here. <laughs> Jeff's been with us uh, many, many times before. We always love having Jeff join us. Yes. Yeah, it's so good to be here. I mean, it's, what, a great, uh, what a great opening day. I've been uh, watching most of them, so it's been great. Awesome. All right. So uh, is, it, is it all me now? It's all you. It's all you, buddy. You take, right. take over. I'm going out for a bit. I'll be back. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I didn't realize it was all me, so it's good. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> no, I didn't it's all me. I just didn't know if that was the time, right? So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I, I'm in preparation for the for the conference. It's been uh, this uh, third year participating in the third year of the conference, so it's uh, been great to be part every year. And uh, I was just thinking, like, I know there's a bunch of new people that are part of part of it, and so I would just go through some, try to talk about just some basic things, and uh, you know, not go to the complicated things. Just has a lot of great uh, classes that you can watch dealing with the forms of project based things as well. So what I really want to do is just kind of uh, go through some basics and talk about, um, yeah, what, uh, what, what, uh, what we're about here. So uh, those who are super new, brand new, I'm Jeff Rutman. I was a production potter and now I'm making these forms um, nonstop. So it's, uh, I, thankfully I have a team now of five people here helping me and uh, making this all work. Plus the home team. Uh, Gretchen and the kids at home so uh yeah so it's been good we just came back from the kids and Gretchen had to break so uh they came with me to the Alabama clay conference so I know some of you out there may have been there but uh it was a great conference it was um so good to be there so shout out to all those folks and for the Alabama clay uh community for uh putting on another amazing work uh conference so next year if you uh you're in the southeast or want to fly somewhere it's a good it's a good uh you want to get away from the cold go to alabama clay conference yes I'm gonna have to to do that <laughs> the first time, but uh you know uh, but you know the south the south this time of year you get a little bit of uh, a little bit of action from the weather so yeah so um what i have here on this um table here and kind of be showing the image just some basic shapes and you know really uh, what I'm trying to do is to create these wooden fiber board forms that uh, help you to repeat the shapes over and over again and help you to add all of the different decoration that you may want to for the surface. So I really have started to figure out that uh, the more basic the form, the more complex the options can be, the more options that you have, the more choices. So. Uh, we have these, the one forms that have probably the most um, interest to them or design to them already in them are the flat shapes, which are wonderful shapes, but they, um, they, 
they can limit you to what your design is going to be. So I really love that um, just a general rounds or squares that uh, you can use. This one has a little bit of underglaze still left on the on it, but uh, little remnants. But uh, so my hope is really to kind of give you kind of the platform uh, to give you the general shape, the support that you need to kind of recreate um, the shapes over and over again. So, so yeah, and then also some basic tools. Um, I'm going to maybe go through them and do some quick demos and kind of talk about them generally. But uh, some of these tools, and I really want to tell you that um, if you, the more and more you get into clay, the more and more you find these little problems, right, that occur. And especially if you're making multiples, you want to be able to repeat that over and over again. So uh, finding little kind of hacks or tricks that you can use to um, to help your process along, that works out great. I mean, Kathy just was talking about, you know, the simple screen printing thing. So definitely there's ways that you can keep improving your own process by kind of trying to find a find a little tool. So we have a bunch of these little tools. You can see, and a lot of times people give me a hard time about, um, you know, just trying to double my uh, price by cutting them in half. But, um, <laughs> but really what I'm trying to do is I'm really, the problem happened when I was trying to clean the edges of forms and I tried to use a lot of these different uh, tools that are on the market already for edge rounding or even you know, one time I used a, a hotel card or a credit card. I think when I first started, credit cards weren't even really that popular. Like if you had a credit card, you didn't really want to use it for play. But now we get them like by the zillions in the mail, right? Uh, so I, I used like a hotel card to start out with and it had a, a notch in it, but it would wear out super fast because the uh, abrasiveness of, of the grog in the clay. So um, I figured out that these mud tools never wear out. It's like this edge. You know, it doesn't keep wearing down. It's uh, and I talked to Michael Cheryl, who has um, designed these from from mud tools, and he talks about how the clay with the, the this material with moisture basically starts it creates this eliminates the friction, which eliminates the, the wear and tear. So, what I found out is that I really I had this form, and I really wanted to get to that center part to be able to use that center to kind of round off the edge of the slab. You know how the slabs can be that kind of real vertical edge? So that's what that, um, that we did with that. And then figured out quickly, if you just cut them in half, it's a pretty rigid rigid edge. So we have to sand off just a little bit to uh, so that, that edge, the corner part doesn't uh, poke into your clay and give you another mark that now you have to clean out, right? So, so that's that. Here is um, the stew tool. We talked about that a lot. I'll, I'm going to show this in a minute, but uh, it's a compass, right? It's a compass that has a wood dowel in front of a pencil. And I put the, I, we just sand the dowels and put them, replace them. So if anybody needs any pencils, we got zillions of them. <laughs> <laughs> I have to start a golf course, uh, the suit tool golf course. Uh, so we got plenty of pencils for years. But, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, and then a couple other tools are already manufactured. Temper tools makes a lot of a lot of uh, wonderful tools, and uh, but this one is one I think I paid like eighty cents when I first bought it. Um, I won't tell you how long ago, but uh, and it was always in my toolbox and never really was feeling neglected. So I started to use it, and uh, it is like a, a wonderful tool. So yeah, and then I don't know if you've seen these um, these uh, texture rollers. Some really sweet couple. I've never seen those. I've never seen those before. What? What is that? That's an amazing thing. You might even try that in, in this, this basic demo. So, uh, so <laughs> I'm just going to give you, give you some uh, tips and tricks. Any, I don't know if the maybe uh, we have to open it up to questions yet, but <laughs> there's probably zillions. Might get us. Might get me off track. So I don't know if it's a good thing to. <laughs> <laughs> and I do want to throw it out there that Jeff's doing 20% off all of his forms during ClayShareCon, and you don't need a code. He's doing no. it. Just go get them. Just go. He doesn't want to deal with codes. No codes. Just if you need forms, you can get 20% off. They're just marked that way, right? That's it. 
You're just doing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You do what you want. Kind of variety packs. It may be a good time to, if you have a favorite size to. You need stuff. Your sizes. But definitely, if you're gonna do a, a if you're prepping for Christmas already, uh, you can um, you can uh, you can get a head start by having lots of forms. So. Yeah. But so I, I think let's see, let's since you're introing, why don't you tell everybody where the name GR Pottery Forms came from? Because that's a question we've gotten recently, and. I think it's a good place to question. start. Yes. Uh, you know, it, it's funny naming a business, right? And uh, I think all of us have uh, that, that are selling their pottery may have those at that time that you um, had to decide that. Well, I think when I was trying to come up with a name, I think um, I, I would do pottery shows and people would always ask where you're from. And I thought that was a great question. I was really kind of happy that they were asking that question. And they wanted a sense of like, of a place. And so I thought it would be really important to include that in the name. Uh, and so we are here in Grand Rapids. So a lot of people call it GR. And uh, so I thought, oh, GR, for, uh, shortened Grand Rapids Pottery Forms. But then also at the time when search engines weren't so complicated uh, that it would have pottery and forms right in the name. So there's what, that's how it became GR Pottery Forms. I like the kid, my wife is named Gretchen Rotman. And so um, I would, I also say that sometimes it's uh, Gretchen Rotman's Pottery Forms. So, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's a good, um, she appreciates that and other times not, so. Uh, but yeah, so GR Pottery Farm is really from Grand Rapids. We're here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And uh, yeah. Awesome. So let's see what other basics. See, I always forget about these simple things too. So if you have any other- How thick is your slab? That's the- a... Oh, good one. Uh, I could talk, address too. These are also really basic things of um, this process, right? It seems overwhelming the amount of um, clay that's out there. And uh, there's, it's definitely like, I always like to say it's kind of like um, chocolate chip cookies, right? Like we're all using the same ingredients, but uh, they all come out completely different. And so, um, yeah, so the clay is really, I'm, I'm, you know, this is a long answer to your easy question. <laughs> but, uh, Using using uh, a variety of different clays, and you know it's uh, it's really important. I think for your, to, I think the easiest answer is to find something that's as close as you can as possible. Clay is really difficult to ship, so finding a local distributor that um, that you can that that can work you can work with and support uh, to get clay, um, and then once they have some varieties, they may have some suggestions of like what what are other potters using in the area like say if they're making pottery versus having a classroom like which kind of clay you would want to use so i would highly recommend um going find your local distributor and uh and if you're having a little trouble with that we we have actually a pretty good reach uh selling the forms to distributors and so they um they uh um so you can look at our distributor map, and that that may help you find a, a distributor in your area that uh, will sell clay for you. So, so, so clay, I think, is um, it really that's the beauty of the forms is it's so versatile that you can use it for any kind of clay body. Also, versatility is thickness, where you know you can. This one is about a quarter inch thick. Uh, I always like to try to stick around a quarter inch. If you're making more bowl shapes or thicker pieces, I think I would go a little bit thicker um, versus if you want to make really delicate uh, dinner plates, you can use really thin clay. So anywhere between, you know, all around a quarter inch. So I think some clays are heavier than others too. Some, some of them shrink more. So, you know, I would just, uh, but the general rule is around a quarter of an inch. So, yeah, so. So that is kind of what we're, what I'm thinking about basics of uh, helping somebody that's just starting out using, trying to find out what clay to buy, 
we'll have south thick. Um, one important one thing too is that's the color of the clay, right? And so if you want to have a real colorful clay body to do your work in, then you probably want a white. And a lot of times they start out gray and turn white, but um, you know, finding a white clay, you know, most most in the most cases the you know, the color it's just a color in the sense. I mean, obviously there's definitely features and so forth with the clay, but um, but yeah, the uh, the really important I think the important thing is to find something that's accessible to you and that you can try and then. It works out and then uh, you can kind of keep on keep on keeping on so yeah so if someone does use a dark clay how would they clean the forms what would they do do they have to do stuff to you know keep your forms from staining or clean them after each use dad i love that that's a great question too because um you know a lot of times people think that you want to preserve the wood and keep them longer um, but the truth is, we can use these over and over as long as we keep them dry. Uh, so obviously they're going to be wet in the time of use, but the time the times we're not using them, we want to try to keep them dry as possible, and that will prolong their their life. If we the whole reason to use this this particular wood product is that it's fairly porous and it will help the clay kind of separate from the form and release really nicely. So you don't want to add kind of like a, like a clear coat or something down there because what's going to happen is it's going to stick to it. And the whole reason, you know, then we could use a piece of plastic or a piece of glass or a piece of even foam. Sometimes it gets really sticky, right? So the real benefit of using this wood is that it will release really well. If, if you are in a situation where you have to leave it covered for a couple of days and it might start to grow mold or in, like in this case here, this, um, it, uh, it, it absorbs some of the underglaze transfer. If that really bothered you, you can see it doesn't bother me, but um, you could use like a, like a Dawn soap and just kind of scrub that surface with, uh, with its, so there, it, it, the wood is really pretty, it can handle, it can handle moisture for like a short period of time. It's just, it doesn't want it to stay wet for a long period of time. The longer it stays wet, the more the wood starts to absorb that moisture and then it starts to get soft or fuzzy. Um, in some cases, if it's under long periods of time, it can start to swell. So uh, yeah, I, I think it's interesting too, like, because it's a natural product like clay, there's sometimes where uh, certain forms absorb more than other times. So if you're really particular with, um, you know, that surface of your forms, I would suggest the first time you make them, make them without any texture or without any underglades in it. Um, just put a raw piece of wet clay over the top and make a make a plate or tray or whatever. That, that helps to like kind of like open up those surfaces it, or you know or, you know kind of fill them up. what has happened in, in some cases where I put texture on the first piece and put it over the form that texture kind of remains in the form for a long period of time the, the outline of that you know because it was in certain areas it was drier or wetter than the other so yeah and so again another long answer to a short question uh, you could just use regular dish soap to kind of clean like the brown clay off. I don't ever clean off the clay. I just leave them, I just leave them uh, as they are. And the clay just kind of falls off. So every once in a while you have to clean your shelves or your floor, but um, but yeah. So I don't think you really need to be too particular with um, how, uh, how hopefully you lose something. But uh, yeah, so we, we, lost, um, we lost you. Can we lose you? We lost your, uh, I still, still right? hold on. We got you back. Saved you. You're back. <laughs> All right. So let's have to do the top down one. Oh, there we are. But, um, but yeah, so they're really durable, really forgiving, but just to know that they're wood and to know that, um, you know, that they, you can destroy them easily. You can, but they are, 
I, I started using, I was talking about, I was doing production pottery before. I was using the forms for like about eight years prior to, um, prior to selling them. So I kind of knew what the durability was or you know, how, how abusive you could be, on, be with them. And I taught classes as well. So um, I let the students kind of beat them up to see like what the real durability was. So, well, I'm gonna use one of these really amazing uh, texture rollers here. I'm gonna make a little triangle. Another another real advantage that which I really didn't intend on, but um, it it really helps well. The beauty with this kind of flat surface is that the pressure is really diluted across the whole form. So that's sort of the explanation. But the practical part of that is that we're going to we don't have to worry about losing all of our texture. Sometimes uh, I used to carry. Uh, this piece that had, if you go to Michael's or Joanne Fabrics, Hobby Lobby, they have um, they have some die cut felt, and so it's a super intimate um, design in the felt. And uh, anyway, so even that, it still remains in there. So I would like to bring that along as like to show you how um, you can have a pretty good amount of pressure and still not uh, ruin all that texture. Uh, this, is, this is the way I've always approached the forms is to drape the clay over top. I think I don't have quite the patience to kind of pre-cut the slab. Uh, I wanna kind of make those decisions as I go. And I'm not really fully invested in this piece yet because I'm just draping it over. There's definitely so many um, tricks and tips out there that you can um, that you can use to um, um, <laughs> that you can. Uh, you're just back from the conference. I bet you're like fried. <laughs> a little, yeah, a little bit. Yes. One yeah. conference to the next. <laughs> Is it it's funny how the older I get, uh, I need this I need this coffee here to uh, make my brain work. Right. Keep you keep you going. Uh, so you were talking about how uh, you don't pre-cut the the shape before you make them. You like to drape it, yes. like you're doing right now. Yeah. yeah, and so saying how there's so many other ways out there, like pressing in the. And foam, there's so many ways. Right, and all those things are great. Like uh, even uh, Kathy, that's the first time she talked about them before. But having a little bit of foam on top to kind of to kind of soften that edge. I mean, there's so many ways. So I, I guess I didn't really say it, but when I was talking about tools, I really would highly recommend. You know, are you going to show how to use the sew tool? Because some folks are yeah. asking. Yeah. 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 All right. This one. Um, but it's. Uh, I really encourage, even like if you're a printmaker, and you can really carve into the forms, and uh, create a design that will be repeated over and over and over. Obviously, once you carve into it, it's going to keep that, keep that, but uh, yeah. So I, I'm, uh, I don't know if I really talked about too much um, talking about other stuff, but uh, compression is really important when we're using slabs. The, you know, the main thing we're trying to prevent is warping. So one of those factors of preventing warping is compression. Uh, it's uh, like when we use a potter's wheel, it's a whole different process and we're really compressing that clay a lot. So when we're hand building, we have to be conscious and think about that clay and kind of helping it to keep its shape. Uh, so I really, I really like compressing one side of the clay, adding any design, any design to it, and then flipping it over onto the, onto the form, draping it over to um, put that compressed side down onto the form. And then once it's flipped over, now I can compress on this side. And uh, be really careful, especially if your clay is thin, about this edge right here, and that you don't over compress that, especially if you have a fairly good sized lip, because there's a lot of weight on this outside that's going to stress this area right here, this main stress area on that ridge. 
So doing something like sanding the form to make it softer or adding foam to the top, right? Um, really can help you to uh, kind of help with that as well. But just be conscious of that area and that it can, can be the stress area. So, all right, so tool. So I know a lot of you are really particular with um, this edge, right? We want to have this really kind of perfect controlled edge, right? And so it can be really difficult to figure out what that is on this particular form. And so you can use the suit tool to help you to kind of um, make this edge. So really this tool is again, another, another version, another way to be able to repeat something over and over again. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this the dowel part and I'm just gonna press it against the, the seam of where the form and the kind of the board meet. They can't even talk and work at the same time anymore. Man. <laughs> uh oh. All those older, wiser people said it was going to come and it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see how now I just developed this edge. And so now, you know, before at the very beginning, people would always ask, you know, like, how do I get that centered on there right? Right? And what was happening is that they, and it still does, right? If you press it into foam or um, you use the form to pre cut a slab, all these kind of easy, fun tricks you can do. Well, then you have to figure out how you're going to line it up on there, right? And so at first, I didn't understand what do you mean you got to line it up? Because I was just thinking, well, you're going to cut it to be lined up anyway, right? So, um, so if you're having trouble lining it up and you're pre cutting slabs, I would try. By draping the, the form or cutting afterwards. And uh, I'm going to, I hope, to, I made a couple test pieces here at the beginning, but uh, hopefully I can show you the edge here, clean up the edge. But what I want to do is kind of clean up an edge after the fact. Now I have some excess clay, uh, the old foot maker, right? You know, just as a class on how to make these, um, but it's just a fun way to actually. Maybe you guys get to see the original, my 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 original one of um, another version, another hack, right? Is yeah. I had uh, you know, say like on this loop tool, and that I, you know, I feel like every tool in my toolbox has to have a use or be used, right? So uh, this this nice sculpture tool was being um, neglected in my toolbox. So I'm like, what can I use that for? Well, I realized that if I cut the loop part off, right? If you just get a hacksaw or something to cut this top part off, you have two nice blades, right? And so then those blades can go through the clay. And the thing really is that I can basically kind of keep repeating this the size over and over without a lot, I don't have to measure anything. It's kind of just repeating it over and over, right? And so, um, but then uh, I had a class and I would let, I'm like, okay, I like forcing everybody to use a foot. And I was like, some people might have just heard the story. And that, so, I, so I'm like, okay, well, if they have to make a foot then they have to use my tool. And when I kind of get started getting possessive about my tool, and uh, somebody walking away with it or something. So I was like, um, I guess I got to figure out something. And one of the students said, you should just use the corn skewer. And so, um, and so sure enough, must, you know, probably was out there on Facebook or something or somewhere. Maybe it was uh, Jess's class. But, um, you know, using a, a corn skewer to basically mm -hmm. recreate that, you know, instead of cutting the loop part off, you now have a little inexpensive tool that you can, they come in six packs, so then you can even make some for your friends, right? So, yeah, uh, gifts for all your friends. Everybody, all your pottery friends will love you. You can just make one. Yes. That, I have a tutorial on making it. It's so easy. 
it's a free tutorial. Anybody can watch it. I think it's even on my YouTube channel as well. So if you want, I mean, it's you probably figure it out yourself, but if you want to see me use power tools, you can check it out. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. It's, um, and don't figure out like you, you can't just go buy any, any um, set of corn skewers. You have to kind of do a little bit. Some are better there. than others. Yes, because some are really stiff and they'll, they'll break. And others okay. rust like crazy. And then you don't want to use rusty one uh, to cut your feet or else you'll get the iron in your clay. And if you're yeah. doing porcelain, you might not like that. So yeah, all the things we have to think of. All these, yes, all these, uh, these uh, first world problems that we have to deal with here, right? So I'm just going <laughs> to bend this up here. Um, a really good, actually, I'll, let me show you. What am I doing this? <laughs> Too busy talking. Mm -hmm. Coffee has the opposite effect, right? Right. So some questions if you want while you're working. Are you ever going to make deeper forms? Deeper forms. Or softer edged yeah. forms. The, so what I'm sorry, what's that? Deeper forms or forms with softer edges. Yeah, man. See you guys. Yeah. Yeah, Send you Jeff know, your that, ideas. He needs them. Yeah, I'm. You know, I'm. I'm definitely aware of those. Those. Those things. Those ideas. Right. Of like, um, you know, what's really needed out there, and it's a uh, deeper forms. Though is, I think, is a tricky thing because, thankfully, one thing I, I'm. I'm limited with the material, and, you know, unless like. Like I don't, I don't have a large wood shop here to um, with tables and clamps and that kind of stuff. You really need to like put them together and glue them together, and then and then sand them so they are smooth. So this material only is made in up to inch and a quarter is the maximum, and so I really can't use um, the mixed material and um, do that. So that, but I'm glad that that limitation because really, when we start to get into the deeper forms, the process changes dramatically. So we start to it starts to develop these folds or these things, all the things we have to deal with. And I think if you're a more experienced potter, you can deal with those pretty well. But I want all levels of potters to be successful with the forms. Um, and so until I can come up with a method that makes everybody successful, I, I'm just going to stick with those things that are, 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 are successful. So and kind well, of them. I use, try. yeah, I mean, I use one of your forms I mean, you can stack a few together to get deeper forms, but I have in the past just used one single form and I set it up on a glaze jar and then I drape my clay down and you get this really long sloping side. So, I mean, you can elevate the form and, uh, Make it as deep as you want. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So there's so many options, right? And so many already things out there that you can do to get those deeper forms. Uh, the other thing that I, I'm not really that happy with with the forms is I'm, I'm giving you all these excuses, right? <laughs> you don't want to hear my excuses, but I'm just trying to explain, you know, like just some differences, but also the angle that is that uh, the forms have to be too to release really well. Uh, so most deep shapes looks more aesthetically pleasing to have these vertical walls. So there's all these other great techniques that you can do to, to develop those. So um, I don't think it, I think, I think um, now there's definitely a possibility in the future of making deeper forms, but uh, I think there's better ways to, uh, to make deeper forms. So I would really suggest using this using plaster because then you get you really are getting the same price point and you have a lot more options of, of, of the angle here. So I guess I should explain what I'm doing here really quick. <laughs> the beauty of this, you know, stacking all these, the forms do stack. We do have five packs to give you some different dimensions of height. Um, but there are some, some cons of that of like it creates that seam, right? Uh, but the one advantage, and I'm going to talk about this more, I think it's on, I forget which day, but later in the week about using the forms to measure. 
So they, so that's the on bottom Friday. Of, oh, Friday. Okay. The, the bottom of this form is the top of this other form, right? So I can use this other, since I, I only have the one here and I already put the clay on and I can't do it. If I want to measure what that bottom is going to be, I can take my next lower one and use that as a measuring spot. And so I measured and drew a, a line on this, um, on the clay here. And then I just connected, it made a little line there. And now I'm just going to take my foot maker and follow that line um, right inside, you know, on the, right inside that line. So then I can develop this one edge, one piece foot, right? And the main, no the main pain. reason, nice. the main advantage of doing that is that sometimes these edges, if the angle is pretty tight, it's really good. Um, the clay wants to kind of fold over. So uh, it might be good to create more of an even foot by doing it this way. I don't spend a lot of time in it. Maybe again, this is my level of patience, but I've also found that I get a lot less warping when I don't fuss with the clay that much. And so what I'm doing here with this one is um, I just want to make sure it's attached really well. I don't need to spend a lot of time flipping or scoring because the clay is fresh out of the bag, really moist, and it, um, it's just they're the same moisture content, so they're going to adhere really well to each other. The other thing is, is that um, I don't have a gravity working against me. Like if you had a handle mug, like this one here, I guess you can't see it's got water in it. <laughs> Turn sideways. You know, it's got this pull, the weight of it is pulling against this, this uh, handle. So I want to, I would have to really make sure that those things are really secure and where it joins the body, the handle joins the body is really secure. So, um, but because it's a flat surface and it's upside down, it, uh, there's really uh, no pressure kind of pushing away or pushing up on that clay. So I, I can just kind of loosely put it on there, use my little modeling tool to make sure it's one that's cleaned up and two, that it's attached really well. And then I can move on to the next one. By doing it on the inside and the outside. And you can use those little, like a really stiff brush or a, um, like a cleanup tool. I think you use a cleanup tool, don't you, Jeff? Um, yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. but you could, you could use a brush. You could use your finger if you can get your finger in there and clean it up. There's Lots, lots of things. Sponge, a uh, uh, makeup sponge, the wedge kind, uh, work oh, yeah. great too. You can put that in there. So many things you can use. There's never just one tool for the job. Yes. All right. All right. So I'm gonna make. Actually, I'm gonna make another triangle. I was gonna do another shape, but I wanted to give you a difference here. Any other basic questions that anybody? Uh, of? Well, there's folks asking, not I any mean, questions. Folks asking about shipping. Do you do flat rate shipping? You know, we just basically, we have, um, it's the great thing about using Shopify. And I would encourage you, even if you're a, a small potter, Shopify is an amazing platform. It figures out what the real cost of your shipping is. So unfortunately, if you're in Canada, or if you're in Australia, or Dubai, or the West Coast, it's going to cost more because it's going to take you know to get there. So unfortunately, we just charge what what it costs. And thankfully, because of Shopify, we get the best rate possible um, because they're shipping so many packages. So we get the best rates, and we just transfer that right to you. So we do not want shipping to be that much of a barrier, but understand that, you know, the other part of, I know, I know we hear a lot from people in Canada. You know, the unfortunate thing is 
crossing the border creates all this paperwork and which creates all this extra cost, right? So, um, yeah. So you also have to pay part of that reason it's so expensive to ship to Canada is it's, they're billing in that duty. So there's all those other factors as well, right? But yeah, we just we don't charge for the packing, we don't charge for the handling or the boxes. We just uh, try to do what we can to make it as cost effective as possible. So yeah, you know the um, you know Amazon and all these other places that are charging free shipping makes it kind of seem like well, I can only people charge free shipping, but they're basically billing that to the the seller or they're figuring that into the cost. So, and you know, they're doing millions and billions millions of packages, right? So. so what is the form you're using now? Some folks are just asking, what one is that? This form, this was a five inch spherical triangle. We had originally, we had some other triangles, but um, they were, they would get damaged really easy and uh, they're really sharp. And the fourth, the angle was was a little tighter again too, so it didn't seem to last as long. So we kind of eliminated those and added these spherical ones, which have this little softer edge, and uh, they seem to be way better. I, I didn't explain it the first time, but I'm I'm really trying to. Um, I guess we got a puzzle here. We got about six minutes here. Seven we got minutes. no. We've got uh, till five fifteen. So we are at 513 on my end. We have two minutes. Work faster. Two minutes. <laughs> you got I two minutes. You're, you're... <laughs> What's that? Yeah, you gotta so go see how fast oh, Jeff can go. Yeah, you're already, they went fast. I want to quick show you the difference between, you know, what is what is the benefit of a spacer? Um, this one has a hole in it, but that's just because I was drill happy one day. Um, so I'm going to quick make a, this one's going to have a wider lip. You know, a lot of times people think that you should be like right against the form, right? I mean, that's how we normally would use mold, but we're artists, so we know we got to do, make it our own way. So if you wanted to make real decorative lips or bigger, wider lips, so it can catch the food in there better, we have to have a way to deal with that edge. And what I figured out when I was making deeper or forms with a, a bigger lip is that it was really difficult to make another mold or form to go with that. So what I figured out is that you could use these spacers. And if you put the spacer underneath, you'll get the idea it's a little bit big for this, but. If we put the spacer underneath it's a half inch, it lifts that form up off the table and then now creates a way to push down this outside edge, give it a little bit of an angle, right? So on this bottom part is lower than this top part, which creates this kind of angle, right? And the angle will help us in the firing to uh, be able to withstand that pressure and the gravity that's happening. And so you can see how this is a five inch and, and this was a six and a half. And so they're about the same size now, just the inside portion is different. So it may be tricky to, um, I would just really highly encourage you to just try different size or just try, try a couple to get, figure out your size. There's no real easy answer. So 30 seconds. But, <laughs> say everything yeah. you got to say in 30 seconds. Um, if you could buy only one set, what one would you buy? If you were buying just one set, one shape, what set would you get? I think the round, the round stack is uh, round stack. Give you so many so much versatility, and uh, we all want our own dinnerware, right? So, uh, and yeah. all your friends want there too. So, and yeah, if you got so a question, yeah, you guys, we're not going to answer more questions. Sadly. <laughs> We'll see you tomorrow.
<laughs> That's right. So uh, Jeff is going to be back with us all week, every day. Thank you, Jeff, for today. This is just some basics. So he's just introducing you to GR Pottery Forms. Now remember, he has that discount that's 20% off on his site, grpotteryforms.com. It's an automatic discount. You don't have to put anything in. The prices are going to be reflective of the sale currently. So you can just get what you need to get. And if you've been thinking about getting GR Pottery Forms, this is the best time to do so because you get this really great deal. Now, if you have more questions for Jeff, you can always email him. You can go to his website, grpotteryforms.com, and contact him through that. And you could wait till tomorrow because he's going to be back doing a demo with us. Um, he's going to be doing a demo on GR Pottery Wheel Assist Basics. So if you want to know all about the Wheel Assist, come back and check that out. I actually made this on the Wheel Assist right here. So you'll find all about, all about that tomorrow and so much more. All right, we got some more stuff coming for you this evening. We have flexi bats coming up next. And if you don't know what flexi bats are, well, guess what? You're going to find out. I made this mug using a flexi bat. And so we'll have Chelsea Hanley on. And then after that, we'll have Adam Field joining us for a studio 